Okay. Hi, I'm Laura Ledbetter. And I'm Lowell Joseph Gallen. And I'm Laura Ledbetter. No. <laughs> no. What did you say? Uh, oh, I'm Mark. I'm Mark. The, the clone me. didn't come out quite right. right. I forgot my lines. I'm Any sorry. similarity is... I is, 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 is my lines. I'm sorry. Okay. We are very happy <laughs> to be here at 131 West 72nd Street in the studios uh, at when, School for Film and Television, which Mark Stolzenberg founded and uh, teaches at. And this is another interview for the New York-based Laura and Lowell show. Laura, Mark? Hi, Mark. Hi. You want me to pick it up? Sure. Yes. Yeah, we were just discussing, <laughs> I have a class coming in. Uh, I started uh, a very unusual class called Star in a Movie. And it, it, it's sort of like glorified scene study class for film acting. No, so please it, explain what a scene study class well, is also study, for me because uh, I don't okay. know. Well, scene study is in theater uh, classes usually where you actually do a scene from a play and you stage it and you act it out. Okay. So, but it's like a short scene from three to five minutes. Uh, so I use that in my film acting classes. Uh, and I started out taking scenes from famous movies like Good Will Hunting, Kramer vs. Kramer, uh, the movie Francis, The Fabulous Baker Boys, things like that. So I, I put all this work into working on scenes with my students, and it's a way to teach them how to act and uh, get it up on YouTube. And then I would realize, well, I can't really do anything else with this because I don't own the rights to the movie. Right. And I'm sort of uh, right. limited, and it's sort of a dead end. So then uh, I started just writing my own little scenes, and they became like short films, and I and, and became very popular. And that, all my students wanted to do them. And uh, I just got very somehow prolific with it. I made about 15 of them so far. And some of them have been in film festivals Wonderful. and won awards. And what I finally did was I made a compilation of scenes and I, I put it together like an anthology at sort of Mark Stolzenberg Presents. And it's kind of like Alfred Hitchcock Presents like or like that. The Twilight Zone. Right. And I come out in between each one in my study and I talk about the, the twisted world of Mark Stolzenberg Presents. And they're all sort of quirky, <laughs> crazy New York stories. That's great. That Otherwise, that That's would be interesting. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, and I'm Creative, working. Mark. I'm just doing uh, editing it now, and it's almost finished. I just have to put music to it, and I'm going to send it out. And the work speaks for itself. Yeah. You're telling that story. Yeah. Yeah. Mark, you just mentioned scenes, mm -hmm. and he mentioned Goodwill Hunting. Mm -hmm. The first time I acted after 40 years since high school, when I was in the spring of 1974, Charlie Man Brown, and you're a good man, Charlie Brown, my senior year at Hackley over in Tarrytown, was the first time I walked back into anything was on Wednesday, October 19, 2011, at the Tisch School of the Arts for a scene from Goodwill Hunting, where I was Sean McGuire and my young acting partner, Freddie Giolando, a star, a great model. He's out there watching and listening. He was uh, good Will Hunting, mm -hmm. and it's a scene where they first meet, and Will Hunting is goading Sean McGuire until he grabs him by the neck right. and says, if you say that again about my wife, I'll kill you. Right. I do that scene with my kids, with my, not kids, students. I was very fortunate. It was a wonderful experience because I felt like a chicken with no feathers. I hadn't done anything for 40 years, and there was our teacher, Professor Rebecca Miller, whose uh, husband is Daniel Day-Lewis and whose father was Arthur Miller. And they weren't unfriendly, but you know when you have all this intelligence focused on you and you haven't done mm -hmm. anything and you walk into the Tisch School of the Arts, you feel like right. you've come to Mount Olympus. Right. And uh, I had a, we had, had a wonderful student director, Lee Lachler, and at the end of this session, uh, he said to Rebecca and the student directors, Lowell hasn't done anything for 40 years since high school and they applauded and it was very touching for me. So you're taking me down memory, memory lane. Okay. I really appreciate that because mm -hmm. I have I only good memories of this. I bumped into someone in the street yesterday who uh, was close friends with Joe Franklin, memory lane. Yes, Joe and Franklin. And I was on the Joe Franklin show in 1978. Really? Uh, I was Because I was on the cover of New York Magazine for yeah. a show that I did. Uh, off Broadway, That's I had nice. written and produced a, a, a play 
And I got on the cover of New York Times, oh, and, okay. and my press uh, agent got me on the Joe Franklin show. And it was great. He's a terrific guy. Uh, is he still alive? He's 90 years old. That's he still has an office in still? Midtown. Oh, and you can sure. just walk in and say hello to him. That's nice. And he's happy to see people. That's wonderful. What were you saying about you have three stars? You're going to be trained to be stars in it's a called, movie. It's in called Star in a Movie. Minutes in closing? Star in a Movie class, in which I write an original short film. How short? Uh, anywhere from two to five minutes. That short. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then I have this, the students, you know, play a role. But what I've been doing is writing the films based on the chemistry between my students and their personalities and their special special skills that they have. For instance, I have a little woman who will be coming in, and she, she's a strange person, but a very wonderful person. Uh, she's very small and eccentric. And she works as an accountant for a living, but her hobby is she's a psychic reader and, and a fortune teller, and she has parakeets that give her messages. <laughs> so I wrote up, I wrote a sequence of Why stories. Why not carrier based. pigeons? They give yeah. messages. <laughs> parakeets. <laughs> also, I wrote a sequence of stories based on her uh, giving advice to people coming in to right. see her. It's very funny. Okay. And this is what she really does as a hobby. Yeah, and now she's, she's really at, a psychic reader. Yes. So you wrote something for her where for she her. can play right. what right. she actually does right. in real life right. with her parakeets. Right. Well, as Mr. Spock would say in Star Trek, fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so she's coming in with her parakeets and her... The parakeets won't be here today. They, I, I they're on strike and they're off duty. I can't afford the, uh, right. the union wage for the parakeets. They got downsides. <laughs> Let go. Downsize. But they'll be in the... Shoot, we're just rehearsing right now. How many parakeets does she use? I think she has four. Four, so it's like you know a barbershop quartet. She talks to them, which is. Do they talk back? They so try to, yeah. But she <laughs> has all this these wonderful relationship with her parakeets. So and that inspires animal her. Spirits. Yeah, yeah, animal spirits. Like the Native American. Indians. So that's one of your starts. You wrote for her three to five minute short. Yeah. With her right. psychic. Uh, I'll tell you another story. Yeah, we want to hear about another, the other story. Another story what are they I wrote, coming in with? I, another story I wrote that's already produced and finished. Yeah. But it's called Sib Siberian Candidates. And it's about uh, a time in 2065 when uh, cyber profiles, you know, a human being cannot function without a cyber profile. Hmm. And cyber profiles, conversely, could not exist unless they had a link up with a human being. So it's about cyber profiles who lose their humans because of death, sickness, whatever, and now they have 24 hours to find another human being or they'll be deleted. Wow. You so, mean like an avatar so stuff that's an that's electronic avatar? Sort of an avatar kind of thing. I, I had yeah. not, not seen Avatar when I wrote it. I think it was before Avatar, but, I was, but it's similar to that. And you put this, uh, this 40 comment. years in the future. Yeah. Right? 2013, that's 50 years in the future. Well, we're almost at that point now. I mean, who can it's take What human point. being can be that's successful right. without a cyber presence or a profile, right? It's, if you're not linked in, you're in trouble. Right. Well, I'll tell you this. When I walk, I rented a room for the summer in Riverdale so I can build my TV show with Laura. And I walk for an hour each morning to my dad at the Hebrew home where I uh, work out of my knapsack. And on the way, I see mothers and nannies pushing junior, maybe one-year-old, in the in the uh, what do they push? In the little uh, in the little baby Strong. carriages. And what does junior have? He has uh, not just a little phone. He has those what do you call those iPads? Those big go readers, and he's busy pecking away and checking at the internet. And he's one. So, uh, like Mark says, the future is here, right. and I feel right. very antiquated. Years ago, I said to our younger daughter, when she was younger, uh, something about record players. So she looked at me, and she was completely serious, and she said, Daddy, what's a record player? You're right. At that moment, Wilma, tell Fred, tell Wilma, set another place for dinner, <laughs> and then I'm going back to the display of the Smithsonian, from which they yeah. unembalm me to TV, come here and talk to Mark. TV's all over its history. I mean, it's all now on the internet. That's the way. We have radio, we have theater, then we have radio. Radio got was supplanted by television, mm -hmm. right? And television, a long run, but it's gone. It's on its way out. Television is on its way out. I, I'm friends with one of the uh, 
with a longtime director uh, of All My Children, Francesca James. We were old friends. She got me on the show a couple of times. And she was just stuck. They called her, you know, they're redoing the soaps on the internet. Right. Course, they're not running them anymore on television. Yeah. And she said, after all these years, now they call me back. And I thought they were going to ask me to direct, but they said, well, we're going to give you a part acting on the internet. <laughs> and she, she was saying, like, yeah, there used to be television, right. and now it's internet. There is no more TV. Right. Changing. Okay, so we've got stars coming in a few minutes. The parakeet, the psychic, and we've got the cyborg, cyber, what, what do you call it? Yeah. Uh, Siberian candidate. Siberian candidate. And who's the third star said, coming through story? that door? Remember what Gandalf says in Lord of the Rings at the Siege of Gondor? Whatever comes through that gate, you are men of Gondor and you will stand <laughs> your ground. Then the gate opened, I would have run too. Okay, right. so we're on to whatever comes through that door in a few minutes the parakeet, the psychic, the side. Syrian CYB who's on <laughs> I'm on first, what's on second, I don't know who's on third, who's on third? Mark, who's coming in the door in a few minutes? The number three that you wrote the screenplay. Oh, oh three, yeah, minutes. well I have other ones. Uh, there's one called Cell Phone about a young woman who uh, loses loses her cell phone at a, at a disco, at a club, and uh, she uh, panics because her life is over, she thinks her life is over, all her contacts are in there. And she engages this cab driver to drive around the city to try to find her cell phone and gets into all these adventures. These, and this is based on a true story because my girlfriend had lost her cell phone and we frantically went looking for right. it and got it to. It's amazing that the people you meet. That you and encounter. Can, uh, during it's a cross between journey. taxi driver too and the Canterbury Tales. And of course, she ends up falling in love with the cab driver. Does she find end. her phone? Yes, and she does. It was very. Easy. Actually, in the back of the cab. See what happens when you watch your phone and find Don't true love. Now, uh, speaking of high technology, this is my old model Blackberry. Uh -huh. And you may run out of ink, but if the electricity conks out, you're still functional. So, that's uh -huh. one of the gag lines that almost always get left. Just a second, let me take out my old model Blackberry. And it works. Well, you know what? So yes. Telephones that work on the basic landline. Are yeah. Much better than what you're getting, certainly in That's the cell phone right. exactly. or in Verizon, whatever. Uh, during a hurricane, none of those things work. Yeah. But the landline land that's line. coming through a direct line right. will work. And the quality of the sound in it's general much is so much superior. Yes. That's what's disturbing about technology is that things mm -hmm. get worse for us. I know. Not that they I don't agree. improve our lives. No. If it improved our lives, I wouldn't complain. But things get worse. How many they don't get cheaper, either. They don't. How many people remember the old days with telephone of pulse and tone? First there was... That's right. Tick, 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 right, right. Beep, 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 beep. Right, right, right. So, so let's see. We've got the phone story. You wrote a three to five minute phone screenplay. Right. We've got the parakeets and we've got the cyborgs from Siberia. Right. <laughs> wow. And the, ta the cross between oh. Taxi Driver 2 and the Canterbury Tales. Yeah, I got another one for you. This one is okay. great. Okay. okay. <laughs> guy. We're still on start. He's the stockbroker guy from New York, making half a million a year. Moves out to LA with his wife because she wants to be an actress. Poor yeah. thing. Okay. So uh, <laughs> he gives up his job to go out there with her and give her emotional support. So the movie opens, they're having a big fight, and she leaves him. She's leaving him. And he, he's, he's totally distraught. He's, he, he, this movie is about a man who will do anything keep his woman, the love of his life. So, the actress who went to Los Angeles and slept him with Yeah, her. she leaves. So she says, she, she tells him, I'm a lesbian, and I'm not interested in you anymore. So he decides to have a sex change operation or become a woman in order to get her back. Wow. <laughs> and so he goes, he, he goes to, the, the next scene is with a therapist who's trying to give him uh, like permission to right. have the operation. And she does. He he finally begs her to. He explains his situation. She finally capitulates and says, "Okay, I'll give you. I'll sign the papers." He gets the operation. Wow. The last scene in the movie is his wife's in bed with his film producer, played by moi. And yeah. uh, and I say, "Did you get rid of that stupid husband of yours?" And she says, "Oh yeah, I told him I was a lesbian." <laughs> it sounds like <laughs> shades sorry. of Eddie Albert and Zsa Zsa Gabor in Green Acres. Right. She schleps in Los Angeles. Right. 
And we talk about it takes a woman, so then I hear Horace Vandergelder and Helen Dolly saying, it takes a woman all powdered in pink to lovingly clean out the drain in the seat, which will only be played by Walter Matha <laughs> with Barbara Streisand. Goodbye, goodbye. Please, Horace, don't try to stop me. All right, so we've got a trip to Los Angeles. We've got the parakeet lady with the psychic. Yes. And we've got the cyborgs in Siberia where right. we're resurrecting from the dead mastodons and other old creatures oh. from the snow. I got another great one. Okay. okay, we're on to I'm telling you, number these four. stories. Just three to five minutes each. Story and they're talking. coming in five minutes here. We are in the studio. The stars are coming. Not to brag, but these okay. stories are gems. I don't know where I got this. I'm the director of the school. Yes. Pay attention. Take notes listening to it. Here's, here's another one. All okay. right. Uh, 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 this like uh, Puerto Rican kid from the Bronx who's the star of his high school baseball team playing shortstop and everything, he's on his way to the state championship and he gets into a car accident and he ends up in some abyss somewhere. He doesn't know where the hell he is. Yeah. And turns out there's this woman there, a, a fancy woman who's like talking to him and as the conversation progresses he discovers that she is God and that he is now talking to God and that he was sucked from life as he's a recall wow. because he's Puerto Rican and he doesn't know how to dance and the movie's called Dance in School and so uh, and the God is saying you were, you, you're Latin you're supposed to know how to dance yeah. and you don't dance he goes I don't dance I don't know how to dance he says but you're Spanish you're Latin you're from Puerto Rico you have to know how to dance you're a, you're a recall so you, you can't go back to Earth until you learn how to dance, <laughs> and it's called dancing school. I like that. that I can relate to because my dad will be 93 in September, he would and who that. goes to pump iron every morning after breakfast at the Hebrew home? He had a law practice in the El Barrio, the South Bronx, from 1950 to 2000, and he wrote a book, Abogado, 50 Years on nice. the Street collection of stories he told about life down in the world of bodegas and botanicas and hibros, hibros or hillbillies uh, from the mountains of Puerto Rico who came to New York after World War II for a better life and they brought the old work courtesy and culture. My father's social life as a lawyer in the South Bronx revolved around Hispanic gatherings with dancing. There are photos of me in a cummerbund and a tuxedo at the age of four. They like ballroom dancing, my sister in a hoop skirt. And when I was small, er, I was in the Spanish and Puerto Rican day parade. S footnote, Spanish means Cuban. And Puerto Rican means Puerto Rican because like with German and the Polish Jews, everybody, you know, you need one synagogue to pray in and not to pray in. Everybody needs someone to feel superior to. The Cubans felt very superior to the Puerto Ricans. That had two parades. They called themselves the Spanish Day Parade because they were the real Spaniards. And the Puerto Ricans, you know. Hey, do I have a joke for you? All right, let's go. Uh, do I have a joke for you? Which one? So this Jewish guy, he's stranded on an island from a shipwreck. Yeah. And he's so bored. He Builds, he gets these twigs and sticks and branches. He builds a synagogue. Yeah. And he's very happy. So he goes to the synagogue every day now. And then uh, six months go by, and he's like, oh, he's not going to rescue the bill. He builds another synagogue down the, down the other end of the island. Yeah. So now there's two synagogues, and lo and behold, the ship arrives to rescue him, and he's ecstatic. And the captain of the ship goes up to him and he says, oh, well, we're glad to take you back. That we're rescuing you, but I notice you have two synagogues. Why do you need two synagogues on a desert island? He goes, that one I never go to. <laughs> Mark, Mark, Mark and I, uh, he's a very good. physical actor. Yes. I have a secret to tell you. We're both members of the tribe. <laughs> We're Jewish. Laura, yes. she's a good girl, but she is uh, Catholic. No, nothing wrong with that. She's just not a member of our tribe yet. We do accept applications, that's true. But she's a Catholic girl, part Cherokee, among a very varied Scottish, English, and other yeah, eclectic right. background. Hey, it's possible Mark to become I... Jewish by injection, right? That's right. And like my girlfriend says, I have a little Jew inside of me. You have... I just you are... you ready for, uh, you're ready for I was ready. Uh, your shots. I think I got it already. You did. We say honorary member of the tribe, Mark and I will accept you, and when the psychic comes, she will do a ritual, All right. and induct you into our tribe, 
and then we will set you up with a cyborg from Siberia okay. and make sure that you lose your posters. cell phone so you go in the taxi and find your true love. Is there, there we go. got stars coming, Mark, in one minute. We've gone through about three or four of your screenplays and stars. In the minute we have left, what would you like to tell our viewers and listeners for the Laura and Lowell show before our next interview? Oh, good question. Um, when you go to the movies, look at the close-ups. Because to me, close-ups are the meat and potatoes of film acting. And you see the most amazing things in close-ups, like... And I will give one example that says it all. The closing scene of Casablanca, when they're saying goodbye at the airport. Two soulmates departing forever because of politics. And not a word is spoken. All tight shots, close-ups, and you're just crying. <laughs> it's the, one of the most amazing scenes. That's just powerful. Close, powerful, yeah. Laura, any concluding remarks before we conclude? Sure. For our we're at 131 West 72nd Street at the uh, Mark Stolzenberg F Acting for Film and Television School. Right. Well, coming back here, Mark, um, and meeting you and hearing your stories was very special. And, and also having the connection that you knew Lou Jacobs uh, brings back uh, childhood memories. And I feel like I've come back home to the craft that I love so much, and that is acting and theater and film. It, and I. Thank you for taking this time, and I loved your stories. Thank you. Well, just a side note, uh, you know, I tend to downplay my circus background because people in our culture don't really understand I know me. that. And, don't uh, I know and that? I'm trying to be you know, a movie star at this point in my career. Right. So I don't want anyone to know I'm really, like, I was a clown because they'd say, oh, could you come to my kid's party? Yes. So, uh, <laughs> okay, I don't, yes. That's why I don't even put that out I there. know, yeah. I know. So if we ever have another they discussion. Uh, yes. It's a serious discussion is the art of clowning, yes. like a Charlie I Chaplin, Buster that. Keaton yes. kind, of, yeah. kind of thing. Or, I know all about it. Yeah, and the soul of a, a true artist clown is I, very different than yes. what most people think of. Here. They think of it uh, like gypsies, like the carnival, yeah. like yeah. that you're just traveling, yeah. and uh, but I understand that it, it's a craft. And it meant, uh, uh, it's an art form. It's an art form, Total art, art form. and I appreciate One that. Of the most and, difficult. I, and I'm so glad yeah. that you made that. Yeah. You clarify that because yeah. I feel the same way, and I get that all the time. But yeah. I know the truth, and the and I I'm glad that we touched on that. Yeah. Mark, okay. thank you very much for this interview, and we thank our viewers for okay. watching and listening. Okay, all right. You.